Hello everyone, it's Chris here from the Southwest Shooters and this is a special video. In collaboration with MTC, this is taking me through this scope, which is the day and night digital HD scope. This is a special one-off. So what you're gonna see is me demonstrating and reviewing this scope and eligible from this video in the link in the description, you have an opportunity to purchase one yourself. Now there aren't many available. There's only a handful left, but using the link in the description of this video, you will be able to purchase one of these yourself if you'd like. Now you may notice some similarities between this scope and another one that is on the market. This one is identical. It's however sold by MTC where you will be covered fully via a warranty, but you will be getting it for a significantly cheaper price. So just have a think about that. The scope comes in this wonderful hard case. It's about the size of a shoebox if you have size 10 feet and it is wonderfully sturdy. It's nice and solid and it opens up with two little latches and it contains everything inside that you're going to need to get going. Now I'm just going to angle this so nothing falls out because it would be embarrassing if, uh, if the scope actually fell out of here. But you have a selection of mounts, the scope itself, a little remote control, an eyepiece to put on the end, uh, the USB-C cable, and the associated Allen keys. I don't like it in unboxing videos when they go through everything, so I'm not, I'm not going to. The main thing that you're going to be interested in, however, is the actual digital scope itself. And I will be honest, I was a little bit intimidated by this when I first saw it and I first started to use it. I didn't read the instruction manual because no guy ever does. But it's, once you get it on the, on the gun, it's very, very intuitive. So you'll notice that there are a selection of buttons on the top of the scope there. There is the main push one there that rotates. There is an on and off button. There is a picture and record button. And there is a menu button, essentially. And that's all you need to be able to navigate your way through all of the settings on this scope. The main one for my money that I think you'll be interested in using or wanting to know about is how you actually zero the scope. And there is a setting in here that enables you to do that. And it's very, very straightforward. And I'm gonna talk you through what happens here now. So what will happen is there will be a red crosshead and the gun the scope, excuse me, will ask you to shoot. So you can shoot one pellet or you can shoot a group. It doesn't really matter. But after you've done that, you will then align a second crosshair to the grouping. And therefore the scope, after you've done that calibration, it zeroes itself. And one of the really interesting things, and I think what really useful things is you can set a number of these calibrations I know that the scope, it stores at least four of them. So if you want to, if you're shooting in different conditions or you're shooting at different distances, you can zero in at different distances, which I think is a really useful modern feature of a scope such as this. It's wonderfully well built. It feels very, very solid and it's nice and heavy. The heaviness may be a downfall, which I'll talk about a bit later on, but for all intents and purposes, it operates exactly the same as a regular analog scope. So you have a, you can zoom in and out using the little wheel here. You can adjust um, focus to distance at the front and you can adjust um, for focus at the back as well. So it works exactly the same, but there are some significant differences. So it's digital, and I'll show you some examples of it momentarily. One of the 
fun things that you can do is actually record through this or take pictures. So if you were a budding YouTuber or a marksman of any description, or you're using the, you're shooting for sporting purposes, you could record sessions and you can even record audio as well because it has an inbuilt microphone. One of the other really exciting things about this gun is that inside the case, you have an infrared lamp. So you can see it's shining purple there. Now, if my GCSE physics, uh, which it should be, um, is still in my head, what you're going to be able to do is at night time, you can use this to, to illuminate when, when you are looking through the scope. So there's a little attachment using the Picatinny rail on the side there. So you can attach the UV lamp. And when you're looking through the scope, you can see things beautifully clear. And I'm, I'm going to show you some evidence of that in a minute. So if you were target shooting at night or you're using it for sporting purposes, it's really ideal. It's, it's going, to be, going to be fantastic for you. What we'll do now, I'm going to show you this, some evidence of, of this scope, what it's actually like. So from last week, I did a day state Delta Wolf video and I shot the gun from I think 40 to 60 meters in 10 in 4k in the highest resolution that you can do with this scope and I'm going to show you that now and this is going to prove to you that using a scope like this you can still get really really tight groupings. Let's have a look at that data now and then I'll talk to you about um, some of the other things I'm going to show you. Let's have a look. So you're probably thinking Right, let's go. Okay, so we've got the target here. And I'm going to show you what I can see, pretty much. Let's hope... go. Not quite as good as the last group, I'm still not used to it 100% yet, but there it is. Let's take it back to 40 meters and look at the difference. All right then guys, we're out here at 40 meters. Let's zoom this puppy in and see what we get going on. So I'm going to go for the ball Although I won't hit it exactly because I'm further away and I can feel there's wind and there's a cyclist so I'm just going to wait for the cyclist to go by. Good afternoon! You can't hear me. Hey, you can ignore me if you want so that's fine. Like it. Great. Cool. Lovely grouping. Let's take it out to 50 and do the same thing again. Okay, it's beginning to rain. So about 50 meters, look. Look how tiny that is. I'm going to zoom in all the way with the, the scope. Make an adjustment here. Oh, wrong way. There you go. Delta Wolf. 
50. I'm not going to use any hold over or hold under. I'm just going to go for it. It's done. On fire, yes. Ah. Right, I'm going to have to use... So I did have to use some hold over then. I would feel better if I was to do that again. I'm just going to recalibrate the scope. So I don't know if it works like this. You can't do it when it's recorded. Okay, so this is the big one. We're out at 60. And um, we're going to adjust the focus. There we go. And we're going to fire one shot. And I didn't hit it. So I'm going to use a massive amount of hold over here. I'm very happy with that. There is obviously a flyer there, but that looks like a really awesome group for such a long distance. Let's have a look. Now, that's proof. I'm not going to be able to shoot much better than that. Okay. So let's take it down to 30 meters and let me show you what it's like not in 4K. One of the disadvantages when you're shooting in 4K is that you don't have the crosshair. And I, I think that it's really good fun to be able to actually see that. It's a really cool thing. Now, when I say see that, you can always see it when you're looking through it, but you can't always see it when you were looking at your recordings. So I'm going to drop the quality now to 1080. And I'm just going to do a little session shooting at 30 meters at some targets and some of the spinny things and you can have a look at the quality yourself. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a shooting gallery down here and the gun is zeroed in at 30 meters. So this is currently on just regular one time zoom. I'm gonna focus in on the little target there and just give you a demonstration. 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 2 zooms, keep going in, keep going in, and there we are, that's reached the highest level of magnification that we can, so you can see it is a possibly a touch grainy, but we are zoomed right in at this point. So if I take it back a little bit and just stay at let's stay at five. Four point nine five. So what I'll do, let's just try and shoot some targets. So I will Oops, excuse me. So 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Now I've zeroed the gun, I'm going to zoom in. Now hopefully, I'm going to look pretty stupid if this doesn't work. I'm going to aim for the bullseye. And hopefully, we're going to be able to get a bit closer. Excellent. Okay, I'm very happy with that. Now, there should be some flippy targets, so you should be able to see from my perspective me actually shooting these targets. Please have one more bullet. Yeah, there you go. Okay, great. Let's see if I can reset. I'm out. Let's go back to the target a second. I'm going to put in another magazine and let's see what the grouping can be like zoomed out a bit further. Okay, so we're going to use this little paper target here. We're going to take it... Oh, I can't really go that far back. Let's zoom it in there. And let's just see... If I shoot seven... I'll do the same on this last splatter target here. Oop. Now we can zoom in and have a look at what the groupings are like. Now that's cool. Oops, excuse me. Let's have a look down here. Yeah, okay. So that is very impressive. Really happy with that. do one more because there is one more target left with very little on it so I will use that for our last bit of footage during the daytime shooting okay so for this one I've used a different brand of pellet so the point of impact will be different but just for the sake of completeness there you go this pellet impacts a little bit lower. And it doesn't look like the groupings is good with this pellet. Oh no, could be wrong. Okay, let's just try this for a second. We've got the moving ducks here. Now some of them are going to fall off because they are. Let's see if I can get them moving. It seems to have stopped. Oh, I missed! Goodness me. I'm out of ammo. There you go.
wonderful scope. You're probably wondering, well, what does this look like at night time? Well, it is now night time, or the weather is black. If you are a fan of people just do nothing, you'll get that reference. But I'm going to show you now what this scope is like at night time, at 30 meters. Fully zoomed in, and I'll, I'll take it out a little bit as well, and you can, you can have a look at what it's like. Let's have a look at that now. So I just had to put a magazine in the gun, apologies. So I think that it is, is it? Let's try that one. And then try and see what it groups like. It's absolutely freezing. That's a rat. Out of ammo. But look, if I zoom out, it's starting to rain now. But you can see the details of the trees, lovely. Everything. There you have it. There is all of what this scope is capable of. Now, there are some other things that I haven't really looked into. It's got like a ballistics calculator and a rangefinder on. I have no doubt as to the, the quality of that. I haven't used those features. They're not something that I would uh, ever need to use, but they're there if you want them. I'm gonna just finish the video talking you through some of my positives and negatives of this, because I think it's really important to be able to be honest in the review and inform you about everything. So I'm, I'm gonna do that now. Positives. This is a lot of fun. I very much enjoyed this and I would like one of these. It's very easy to use. It feels very, very intuitive. So the fact that you haven't used one of these before, don't let it ever put, put you off. Because if I can use it to good effect, there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to do the same thing. As I said, I didn't read the instruction manual to begin with. I just figured, why not just give it a try? I really, up to a point, like the quality. So as I've said on one of the um, voiceover videos when I was showing you the data, it does get a little bit grainy when you're zoomed right in to a target or a flippy target or whatever it is that you might be shooting at. Obviously, you're not going to have that with a analog scope, but it's kind of a trade-off. I'm never gonna, at least I don't think I am anyway, gonna ever invest in something that you plop on the end of a telescopic, of a um, scope. It's just another thing to go wrong. I really like the fact that this is all contained in one unit. Now you don't need to zoom in to the levels that I do when I'm shooting. Indeed, you might find it, um, you might want to ridicule me for doing that. That's absolutely fine. I, I, I really don't mind. 
but you could see that the quality improved dramatically when we were zoomed out. In some of the 4K videos, when I was using the, um, the Delta Wolf, it was wonderfully crisp video, really, really good quality. And that's awesome. I really, really like that. Negatives. So it's fairly weighty. You're gonna have to be a much tougher man than me, or woman than me, if you are gonna be using this stood up, shooting freehand, okay? No chance of me doing that. It's hard enough using whatever gun I might be using with a regular scope on. But this is fairly weighty, and it's even weightier when you have the infrared lamp on the side. I'm not going to use this stood up shooting. If you can, you're one hell of an athlete because I, I can't do that. That's a negative. Obviously, a fairly big negative is the fact that you have to charge the gun, charge the scope. So when I did consult the manual, it did tell me that from a two hour charge, you're going to get about six hours of view time. Now, I, well, I have shot for a lot longer than six hours in one day before, but you want to think about that. The last thing you'd want to have is in the middle of a session, the battery running out. That would not be very good fun. Something that I'm really happy with, and this is a positive and a negative, and I'll explain why, is that the, the kit comes with lots of different mounting choices for, for your gun, but it only comes with um, mounts that are suitable for Picatinny rails. So I, hadn't, I haven't had the opportunity to use this on either my Renegade or my Red Wolf because they don't have pick rails. In this video, I used the Delta Wolf and the Wirearc HW100 ballpark. So this, the second data was using the ballpark, um, the, the wire arc, excuse me. So it would be nice if it came with some non-Picatinny mounts, but I'm sure you have some of those available. To finish up, as I said at the start, if you are interested in this very scope, not this exact one, this, this is a demo one, but a brand new one from MTC, with a warranty, check the video description below. Okay, this is a first sort of um, foray into making this kind of a video with a company. And MTC are offering some of these for sale currently. They are limited and they are at a significantly discounted price. They will obviously come with a full warranty, but you've seen first hand in this video what a scope like this is capable of and I've also given you my thoughts on it as well as shown you how I can shoot with it in day and night settings. So check the video description out, there is a link in there, you can follow it and if you're interested you can then make yourselves a purchase. Until then, thank you for tuning in, thank you for all the comments and all the previous videos and we will be back for more very very soon shoot safe take care and i'll see you soon bye bye